What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, sometimes when I do videos and I say I told you so, people get mad. But there's nothing to get mad at if I really did tell you so. And the only reason I'm saying it is not to gloat. I have no problem just being right in the background. But the only reason that I bring it up and I smear it in the face is because of the detractors. The people who are clearly leaving five and six comments going against what I'm saying, saying how I'm false and making up these narratives and things like that. So Andre Ward and Sullivan Barrera, an agreement was reached for them to fight in Oakland at the Oracle March 26th. Now, go check my track record. Go check my old videos, right? And people are like, oh, why are you not making a video mad at Ward? Because of there was an early report saying they couldn't negotiate or people were complaining like oh ward's trying to offer sullivan barrera peanuts he wants him to fight for peanuts ward doesn't want the fight and i said chill this is negotiations this let me let me tell you guys something when it comes to a fight or negotiations in general it doesn't even have to be in boxing negotiations you get what you negotiate for you know what I mean? I think they even had it in the Jake Gyllenhaal movie, Nightcrawler. Shout out to that movie. That's, that's a good movie. Um, you get what you negotiate. You know what I mean? So the point being is negotiations aren't always going to go smoothly. They're not always going to go uh, without any kind of roadblocks or disagreements. But the art of negotiation is to get an offer. You don't like the offer. You don't just hang up the phone. You don't just like cut off like communication and walk out of the office or round table or wherever you guys are at, at Chuck E. Cheat, wherever you guys are negotiating at, you don't do that. You submit a counter offer. Like, hey, we don't like that purse split. How about this? We don't like this venue or location. How about this? That's the art of negotiation. So I told people, as far as Ward is concerned, let the him, Rock Nation, main events, Sullivan Brera, his team, Abel Sanchez, whoever's involved, let them handle it out. And then after after that point, we can decide what is what. Now, Ward, some people are, they're saying, oh, Ward's inactive. That's dead. That, that whole situation is no longer a factor for Andre Ward's career. In the fact, Ward last fought June 20th. I was there live against Paul Smith and he stopped him, right? And people, oh, Paul Smith came in overweight. He weighed 190 the night of the fight, 190 plus pounds, right? And it took Arthur Abram, a puncher, who Ward also beat, took him two tries to convincingly beat a guy like Paul Smith. And I'm not saying Paul Smith is the, the world beater of all worlds, but Ward only needed one shot at it, and he got it right, you know what I mean? Versus Arthur Abram, who had a very first close competitive fight. Anyway, um, he came back June 20th. Pacquiao fought a month before in May against Mayweather. And he's been on the sideline with his alleged shoulder injury. So people saying, oh, Ward's inactive. I mean, why aren't, you, why aren't you saying Pacquiao's inactive since Pacquiao fought just a little bit before Ward? You know what I mean? We know Ward's deal in the past. He had shoulder injury. He was injured on the sideline. Hand fractures. Legal trouble. Rest in peace, Dan Goosen. But that's in the past. So that inactive stuff, another thing that I said, it can't be used against him. Like, they were trying to put him on the Coto Canelo card. It was going to be a good look. The first opponent got rejected by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Again, the detractor said, oh, Ego, make a video. I mean, what what is there to make a video about? Like, okay, got rejected. It's like anything bad about certain fighters, people just want me to hurry up and report. Then they had the Alexander Brand dude, the second opponent, and they said, oh, he's a cherry pick. He's a bum. He's pulling someone in weight. So Team Ward got injured. Ward got injured his knee. They say, hey, you know what? We'll just pull out. We'll, we'll give ourselves more time to better prepare and not have a, a bad performance because we're going in there with an injury. And people said, oh, Ward, he's pulling out because he's scared. So first of all, he was a cherry pick and a bum, the opponent. Now he's pulling out because he's scared. Fast forward to the future. The negotiations with Sullivan Barrera came about. People like, oh, Sullivan Barrera, Ward trying to offer him peanuts. He's an A-side diva. And they were jumping the gun. And I even said on Monday Mail Day and the previous videos I made about the Sullivan Barrera, I wrote articles on my website, BoxingEgo.com. And I told people, chill, hold your horses, see what comes out and see what happens. But no, there are a lot of people, a lot of writers, a lot of channels or people in the comment section 
They wanted to jump the gun, say Ward's scared of Barrera. He's offering him J.C. Penny. You know what I mean? Whatever Sullivan Barrera was saying, he's your promoter, Jay-Z, your J.C. Penny. They were just riding that wave. Now, you look dumb because the fight is agreed upon for March 26th. They have the venue. I will be there. Shout out to the whole Bay, West Oakland, East Oakland, Seminary, High Street. Man, I'll be there. So, bottom line is this. You did all that for nothing. For nothing. All that griping. Same thing with Showtime Sean Porter versus Keith one-time Thurman. Oh, it's taking so long. It's been two months. Some of boxing fans, or boxing fans are some of the most impatient people that I've ever met. It's a negotiation. Porter wants certain things. Thurman wants certain things. Guess what? The fight's already happening. They've already announced it officially. They announced it on the Danny Garcia Guerrero fight. I've seen some print ad stuff for it, posters, Connecticut. I mean, it's a done deal. Same thing with Ward and Barrero. So barring any last minute pullouts, we have a fight and it's a good fight and it's a better fight. So you can't be mad at Ward. First guy got rejected by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Then the second guy, he got injured and he wasn't a big name. Now he's coming up in weight to 175 fighting an undefeated Cuban puncher whose train has a good trainer in Abel Sanchez. So I don't want to hear nothing, man. Like the fans can't complain. There's nothing to complain about at this point. There's nothing. He didn't take the the lesser opponents for whatever reason. The first two opponents didn't fight on the Cotto Canelo. Now we have a bigger event. You know what I mean? Go. I just went to the Golden State Warriors game last week. They've been killing. So the energy at the Oracle is going to be electric. You know what I'm saying? It's just a good time for the Bay Area. It's a good time for boxing. Shout out to Rock Nation for getting it done. Shout out to Main Events for getting it done. And shout out to Ward and Sullivan Barrera. This is a good fight. I don't want to hear, like, people get, oh, inactive Ward. Ward was off a long layoff and fought another undefeated fighter in Edwin Rodriguez and a guy who's a puncher, evident by the fact that Edwin Rodriguez moved up to 175 after the fight. Uh, because he was struggling to make weight and he's getting knockouts at 175 so clearly he was a puncher because his power is carried up to light heavyweight and that's where they're both at now Ward has moved up to Andre uh, to 175 as well so I mean the the hate is just at this point people are going to look dumb in the comment section he's supposed to eventually fight Kovalev he's fighting another undefeated fighter so if, if Andre Ward defeats Sullivan Barrera that'll be yet another fighter where he's taking their O you know what I mean? So, you got to give it up to him. And if Solomon Barrera wins, then he's arrived because he hasn't had a fight of this magnitude yet. And this is a good fight. Like I said, I respect the hell out of the Cuban amateur boxing program and just like uh, in general Cubans because the lifestyle in general, um, not having like professional sports, having to defect to come to America, sometimes leaving your family behind. That's a that's an outside of the ring warrior struggle. You know what I mean? A lot of people have struggles inside the ring or making weight and stuff. That's a real life struggle that you have to deal with outside of the ring. Who wants to be separated from the family? That's what happened during slavery. People would have family members and then never get to see them again. Or, you know what I mean? They don't want to risk getting caught by going back to, to visit or something. You know what I'm saying? So they just have to stay gone till they can work their their way up and, and make enough money to maybe send for their family. So I respect it. I respect Ward. I respect uh, Sullivan Brera and his, his journey and, and things like that. It's a good fight. Nothing to complain about. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like my video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Mm -hmm.